YouTube, thanks for checking out the Film Geek. Okay, if you haven't noticed already, I went ahead and just said whatever and started my uh, Halloween season. So if you didn't notice, I did a couple of horror movies for my spotlight this week. And so I decided to cap things off with a little hunt video. I didn't really go out and film anything. These are just the stuff that uh, Charming Amy and I found when we went out one day. Um, some antiquing, I guess you could say, but we were specifically looking for vintage Halloween decorations. And uh, we found some other cool stuff too. And uh, we went to some other, we went to some uh, local antique malls. We went to one in Shawnee Mission, Kansas. And then we also went to um, the River Market antique store here in Kansas City. And uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna get started here. <laughs> okay, so these were the items, if I recall, uh, these were definitely found at the River Market uh, Antique Mall. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna try to remember where we got all this stuff, okay? Because it's, it's been a minute. I forgot by now, but I wanna get these started off with some of the decorations because these are really cool. All right, so this right here is some really cool vintage Halloween decoration. This is from, this is what's called a uh, Bastille. A Bastille decoration that's the company I made it <laughs> and uh, these were out in like the 60s and all I remember these probably oh man I remember these hanging in schools at least until the 80s I mean this was one I remember seeing but it is really really heavy and thick for it just being some kind of probably 50 cent you know Halloween decoration of its time but it's some pretty solid uh craftsmanship here so kudos 1960 something all right well moving on to another uh classic at least on our part here another classic halloween uh decoration this is a hallmark decoration uh hallmark uh cards hallmark of course is a, a big company here in kansas city a lot of you know them nationwide the greeting cards people they're based here in kansas city they started here in kansas city as a matter of fact and this is one of their halloween decorations so if you were a kid around here this was probably still hanging in elementary schools right now but uh you know since the 80s 90s so that's a nice one right there okay also too in the 80s and 90s if you went to mcdonald's and you got a happy meal instead of getting a toy you got a bucket to put your candy in when you went trick-or-treating and so we picked some of these up. These were from the Shawnee Mission Antique Mall. Pretty sure these are from Shawnee Mission. And these right here are from 1986. And that's McPumpkin, McPump In. Pump In, McPump, McPump In. Pumpkin, whatever. So, so yep, <laughs> vintage toy or vintage uh, Happy Meal box. I guess you could say right here. So this is McPumpkin and this one right here is McGoblin. And these are from the 1986 run. 1986 for me, Halloween 1986 could best be summed up as the year of the werewolf. I was really in the werewolves at the time. Uh, that was the year we, we rented uh, oh, Silver Bullet. My folks let me watch Silver Bullet and uh, I loved it. And also, I believe it was the same year, 86, is when I got to see American Werewolf in London for the first time, which is still one of my all-time favorite movies, not just horror movies, but just, just favorite movies in general. All right, so this doesn't have anything to do, oh wait, one more, I'm sorry, I forgot this one. This one's from 1991, and it's The Witch, as you can kind of plainly see for yourself there, that's The, the Witch Bucket. Put that over here, kind of. Maybe you can still see it there. I'm trying not to buck my microphone, which is right in front of me. Okay, so this one has nothing to do with Halloween whatsoever. But it was just kind of weird, so Charming Amy picked it up. And it's a Dinosaurs, the TV show. There you go. Dinosaurs, the TV show uh, comic book. And, you know, there's the, the baby on the back there. And, of course, baby on the front because that's the character everybody remembers. Um, and dad course <laughs> but yeah it's a comic book it's uh, done by Hollywood comics which I don't know I, I mean Disney I believe owned this I think 
I know it was done by Jim Henson, but I, I don't know if uh, Disney owned Jim Henson at the time this came out or how that works, whatever. But anywho, Dinosaurs graphic novel. Because it's isn't it a graphic novel and they're a little thicker, so it's a Dinosaurs limited edition graphic novel for all of you people who don't read comic books. Oh no, I am a serious collector. I only collect graphic novels. Okay. <laughs> all right, so... Normally, the antique malls we go to, I never find movies. It's just the way it is. Generally speaking, these are antique malls we find most of our knickknacks, our tchotchkes, and all that good stuff at. We don't find a lot of movies or box sets or anything. But <laughs> I come across this, this one uh, little Ben pod, whatever you want to call them. And there's a shelf just loaded with DVDs, and they're selling them all for a dollar. So you knew, you knew I had to dive in. So here we go. All right, I picked up Detroit Rock City. This is a pretty fun movie right here about a group of friends who are trying to get to a Kiss concert. And I don't really care for Kiss. I'm full disclosure, I don't really care for Kiss. But this was uh, during the Satanic Panic time period of uh, heavy metal and all and that is kind of fascinating to me where like everybody's parents was like oh my god that, that's that horrible rock and roll that turned you into satan worshipers so that's this the whole uh kiss what was it kiss uh knights in satan service yeah yeah so there you go kiss i mean the only service they were in is uh serving their bankroll they 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 like their money all right especially gene simmons okay moving on here i'm just going to try to move some of these off here so give me a second here sorry i don't want to pile everything on top of our vintage toys and all our toys vintage uh decorations all right i don't think i need to talk much about this one it's a famous movie munich uh I got this, I do have a regular copy of this movie, but this is the special edition, it's got all sorts of cool stuff, all sorts of special features and interviews and blah blah blah, so it was a dollar, I'm like, I gotta have that. Uh, Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry. When you see Dirty Harry for a dollar, you buy Dirty Harry. That is, I'm pretty sure in the Constitution. <laughs> Mad Max, the first Mad Max, picked that one up also for a buck. Um, I'm gonna, I think that's an out of print DVD. I'm sure there's Blu-ray. I'm sure there's a Blu-ray for Mad Max, so. This one's cool, because it's completely unopened, and that is Jaws 2. It still has the Walmart or Best Buy, I don't know, I think probably Walmart sticker on there. For $6.99, I got it for a dollar. <laughs> but now I'm only missing in my Jaws collection, I only need Jaws 3D. Jaws 3, but Jaws 3D is the one I need. I need to get that one. All right, now this one was an out-of-print DVD for a long time, and I believe either, either Shout Factory or Scream Factory, I'm going to say Shout Factory because it's a kid's movie. Uh, they put out a special edition Blu-ray, but this was the only one for a while, and that is The Explorers on DVD. So this is pretty cool. I love this movie when I was a kid. All right, I'm gonna be honest. I haven't watched it. Very, I don't think I've watched it since I was a teenager, like 13 teenager, to be perfectly honest. So it could be god awful, but it's uh, <laughs> Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix. This is, uh, I, I don't know if it's their first movie or not, but I mean, super young Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix in this movie right here. And they're kids who, um, well, it's a little bit more involved, but they make a spaceship and they go into space and they meet aliens and, it, you know, it, wackiness ensues. It was the 80s. It's when kids used to get in rocket ships and fly places. There were several movies about kids getting in rockets and flying places in the 80s. That's just what we did. All right, uh, speaking of kids in the 80s, The Karate Kid. Yeah, weird. I didn't own this. Seriously, I didn't have The Karate Kid. It's like one of those movies that I swear it's always been on television or on a streaming service or something, so I never think about owning The Karate Kid. And so finally, I did. I finally thought about it and went, oh, The Karate Kid. I buy, I'll buy that now. 
All right, this is a movie that makes you just, oh man, you just want to break apart your whole psyche and your life and make you, oh, just sadder than hell, then you need to watch The Wrestler. Um, this is Mickey Rourke, probably the best movie the man's made. I'm, I'm going to say that. This is He's phenomenal in this movie. He's so freaking good in this movie. Uh, Darren Aronofsky directed this. This is one of his more normal movies, I guess you could say. It's a little bit more um, less weird, less surreal. Uh, it's, it's kind of like, even though there were some surreal moments in... Um, uh, Requiem for a Dream. Uh, it still has very, you know, real moments. That's like this one. It's very, very real moments. So, The Wrestler, that's an excellent, excellent film. The Orphanage. Ah, more Halloween. This is a ghost story about a haunted orphanage, and this little bastard right here <laughs> runs around and scares the hell for a living hell out of you for about an hour and a half. That's all you need to know about The Orphanage. This was an awesome find. I'm not 100% sure if this is an outer print. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is an outer print. I do not believe there is a Blu-ray of this movie. Again, I could be wrong. I'm not, I'm, I don't follow the out of, out of print stuff, okay? It, I, I'm going off of a theory in my head. This seems like a movie that would be out of print. Blood Simple. This is the Coen Brothers' first movie. This is the one that started it all, Blood Simple. And it's very different from everything else that they've done, except for old, uh, No Country for Old Men. This one's very much more like that. It's not as lighthearted as like the Big Lebowski and films of that sort. This is more of a serious crime thriller drama, and it's freaking great. Um, I do believe this movie is known for giving birth to the Texas crime thriller uh, genre, subgenre film. I'm not, a, again, I'm not 100% on that, but I'm just gonna say that I, I think this movie gave birth to the subgenre, the Texas crime thriller. All right. <laughs> the more you know. Then, you know, when you find Sleeping Beauty for a dollar also, you pick it up and you grab it because, you know, you just don't find a lot of Disney stuff out in the wild. And because of the way Disney works, I don't even know if there is a, I don't know what edition of Sleeping Beauty exists right now. So I just grab what I can find. So there you go, Sleeping Beauty. Priest, uh, this is, oh God, this is a movie, it's pretty good, it's freaking good. I, I actually, I did a spotlight on this one, so you can look it up, you can look it up and you can learn more about that movie right there. So, Priest, good stuff. And then finally ending on a Disney film. And again, like I said, when you find Disney in the wild for a buck, you pick it up. All right, and that is The Little Mermaid. Yeah, The Little Mermaid, come on, this movie's great. I mean, this is the reset button for Disney. Disney was going down the toilet, like severely down the toilet before this movie came out. This film saved Disney. You can look that up. Okay, guys, that's all we got. Like I said, uh, it wasn't a huge haul, but we I thought it was some neat stuff that I wanted to show off, especially the, the McDonald's buckets. Those were really cool. Uh, <laughs> Year of the Werewolf, 1986. Um, well, the reason why I also said Year of the Werewolf, really quick, I was a werewolf for uh, Halloween that year, and it wasn't just like anything, like a rubber mask. Oh no, I kicked it up a notch. I had latex, yes, my mom used liquid latex to stick pieces of fur to my face and make me look like a, <laughs> make me look like a werewolf, and I had the teeth. And then to, uh, because, you know, Freddy's cool too, I had a Freddy sweater on, Werewolf Freddy, I guess, I don't know. And, <laughs> and I also had, because you had to carry like something that lit up, you know, a flashlight or something. So I had a light up sword, because I was, oh, I was a werewolf who thought he was Freddy and used a light up sword. Um, pretty kick ass. Halloween costume if you ask me but I'm a little biased 
All right, guys. Well, that brings us to the end of another Film Geek video. If you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notifications and uh, give me the old thumbs up so I know you like what you're watching. And if there's another thing you can do, folks, that is keep watching movies. You know I'm gonna.